From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. Rhode Island surrogate for Donald Trump is hoping for his own Trump bump. Longtime Republican Joe Trillo, a former lawmaker, abandoned the GOP to run for governor as an independent. How will his decision scramble the political math in 2018 and what's his pitch to voters? Our guest this week on Newsmakers, independent candidate for governor, Joe Trillo. Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. Joining me on the program from WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Joe Trillo, independent candidate for governor. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Nice to be here. So uh, you announced a run for governor. Why do you want to be governor of Rhode Island? Well, first of all, I've been a lifelong born, brought up, uh, raised in, in Rhode Island, and I love the state. I think we have a gem with our state when you look at it ostensibly drive around it. We just have so many assets. I see our state right now on a path of destruction that if it doesn't change the direction it's headed, that we're going to turn into being a, a, a severe welfare state. I, o- I already think we've we've reached some form of a welfare state. You know, in the last 10 years, our, our um, census showed us that we added 10% more people needing some sort of public assistance on the public assistance roll. So we went from 20% of our population needing public assistance to our current census, we're up to 30%. So we're headed in the wrong direction. The politicians that have run this state in the past have pandered to, to people just for their votes. They will bring in the, the, the need, most needy people in our society and keep welcoming them to Rhode Island. Now, this is done in the form of illegal immigrants, and it's done in in a variety of different ways. But specifically, the Democratic Party has always felt that these are their voters, and the more they can stack the deck with their voters, the more they they can ensure that they stay in office. You know, instantly, Joe, uh, as I hear you say that, it sounds like pitches we've heard from Republicans uh, sometimes in the past, which is why a lot of the Republicans are saying, Joe Trillo, with a message like that, is going to kill the Republican candidate and re-elect Gina Raimondo. I know that uh, you've been asked that question before, but, you know, what's your defense to Republicans who see you on TV making those cases and say, no, Joe, you're going you're gonna to split our vote. Here's what happened. I, I decided to run as an independent for two or, two or three different reasons. Actually, probably was more than that. But the Republican Party right now is split. You have the mainstream Republican Party or the Republican echelon of the party have not been big Trump supporters. Then you have the Trump wing of the Republican Party, of which I felt as though I was the one that was always carrying Trump's Trump's water as the honorary chairman of his campaign. And those are people that believe not only in the, in the man, but they believe strongly in the message. The reason why I was attracted to Trump originally was because he was fighting for all the things I was fighting for as a state rep. I fought against illegal immigrants coming into the state. I signed on to E-Verify. There were lots of bills that I worked on, even with some Democrats, that would have affected illegal immigration. So. I believe that we have two different parties. Now, why as an independent? Because if you look at the way Trump ran in Rhode Island, he got a big percentage of the Democrat vote in the general election. I'm out after that. Not, I maybe not get it all, but I certainly would not be able to get that vote in the Republican primary. And I feel as though that Today, you got to shed the image of, of party politics. I don't want to be part of a party that's going to drive my agenda. I want to know I can do and say whatever I want to say. I believe political correctness is killing the country and they're killing the state. I don't want to be pigeonholed by a party that says, oh, Joe, you can't talk like that. Have you officially left the party yet? I have not officially remove my name. How come? From from the Republican rules. Well, I have until uh, March to do it. I just haven't rushed in to do it. People think you're getting cold feet. No, I'm not getting cold feet. Joe Trillo doesn't get cold feet easy. Are you, uh, is there any 
are you, how likely are you to still be in the race in November? I suppose you have to tell me, oh, I'm going to be in the race. But do you have any hesitation? You know, it's, it's such an undertaking to run for governor, and even more so without a political party. I'm going to tell you that I feel that I'm in it 100 percent until November. Uh, people are trying to spread the rumor that I'm going to get out. I have no intentions of getting out. If I was going to get out, why would I leave the Re Republican Party and announce I'm going to run as an independent? Well, because you got such pushback when you made the announcement. And maybe, uh, you know, uh, you're getting, uh, have you gotten a lot of, have you gotten phone calls from people in the Republican Party? It's oh, a joke. sure I have. Who's sure, called you? Sure I have. I don't want to get into who's called me, uh, be, but I've been a longtime Republican. I was national committee man for the Republican Party. But I feel as though when I look even at the national Republican Party, they don't represent where I want to be today. And that is I want to be a strong supporter for Donald Trump because I think he's doing a great job. Let's get get over the personality problems. And a lot of people can't get past that. You know, if you don't like somebody's personality, you don't like the way they talk, walk, or whatever they stand for, you, you get all hung up about it. But you know, when I hire somebody to do a job for me, if you're an architect and you're a doctor, I don't care about your political views as an architect. I just want you to design me the best possible building you can do. But the president is a politician. You have to care about his political views. You, you care about his political views, but I'm more concerned about him getting the job done and nobody's demonstrated he can do the job any better than he's been able to do it. Let's put the Trump questions to the side just a moment because we do want to ask you about the president uh, in a bit. Uh, a couple other questions on your run. Do, have you done any kind of, you know, you hear the dark mutterings from the Republicans, oh, maybe he made a deal with Governor Raimondo to help her, something like that. What do you say to those kind of, you, you admit it yourself, you said people spreading rumors. It's people spreading rumors, again, trying to hurt my candidacy as an independent. I haven't spoken to the governor. I don't think since she's been elected governor. I have... Any of her people? I've spoke to none of her people. None of them. I have nothing to do with the governor. I knock the governor's policies at every chance. I think she's done a terrible job. A terrible job. And, and a lot of what she does is pandering to voters. She gives away... She can't give away enough free stuff. Let's give free college, free this, free that. Let's do whatever we can to stack up these votes. And, you know, the argument that one of the arguments is that her approval rating is 41 percent. That doesn't mean anything. That means that as of today, it's 41 percent. It doesn't mean that there's not people out there, including Democrats, who aren't going to look at Joe Trillo, who says, let's make this, let's stop making the state a sanctuary state. Let's start to enforce the laws on a federal level in Rhode Island. Let's turn over people to ICE when, they, when we release criminals. Right now, this governor has a directive to the prisons that prison guards under no circumstances are to release illegal immigrants to ICE agents. Would you change that? Absolutely. Including the state police have a directive that, that they can't turn over people to uh, ICE agents. It's like what's going on in Rhode Island. I, I just can't believe that it's got this bad. Do you reject the pushback to uh, all of that and the reasoning why uh, there's uh, some policies that we have in Rhode Island and many other states and many other cities is that that community will be reluctant to pick up the phone and call 911 when they're in trouble, when there is a crime, because they feel like they're going to just get shipped, uh, shipped out of the country or shipped right to ICE. You Do know, you reject that? I'm not going to reject that totally. I believe that there would be some of that. There's no question about it. But... I reject the image that this state is trying to portray. And, and once we've put on this image, it's like our image is the way we dress. You know, it, how do we look? How do we look to the outside world? And the way we look to the outside world is pathetic. So if you want to help our economy and you truly want to help the poor people who are sweating out their property taxes and paying their income taxes, you got to change the way the state appeals to businesses so that we can attract businesses, not buy them with millions of dollars. We will attract businesses to the state because we've created a better business climate. Uh, uh Partly taught while we're talking about immigration because it's part of your uh, criticism. You've been critical of Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza. He has this plan to create municipal IDs in Providence. It's a new program. Uh, w in brief, what's your what's your brief against that? 
Mayor Laza does, every day he gets up, all he does is think about how he can play to the, his constituency. And when you look at the demographics in the city of Providence, that's what he's doing. So he wants to give illegals ID cards. Why? Why? Because it will give them some sort of credibility in, in, in the world. I don't want to give them credibility. Well, even he says it'll have no real legal weight uh, to do. It has anything. no legal weight in our eyes because we know there's nothing attached to it. But I show you an ID in some place that's a city ID, that's a state ID, whatever it is, it looks official. So what are you worried about, though, if it has no weight? I'm worried about you're going to interpret it as having weight, and you may let this illegal do something that you wouldn't have done had he not presented like that what? ID. Like what? It could be a variety of different things. It could, I, I don't have anything specific that I'm zeroing in on, but it could be a variety of different things. You know, Joe, people are going to be outraged just hearing you use the term illegals as a noun for people. There's a lot of pushback from folks who say, you know, you shouldn't define someone as illegal and that terminology, you know, isn't the right way to talk about folks even if they did come to the country uh, without papers and, and aren't here legal. What do you say to that? I say that's malarkey. That is absolute bull. The people that come to this country legally are called immigrants. The people who come to this country by running across the border, getting on planes and, and trying to mingle into our society are without proper documentation are illegals. I don't have any concern about protecting illegals. I want to protect the taxpayers, and if you look at what's going on in our state with the crime rate in Providence, you know, our state is unique. We're such a small state that you can't drive from one city to the other like you would in some of the big states where they're 20 miles apart or 10 miles apart. They all spread into each other. So Providence spreads into Cranston, Cranston into Warwick, Providence into Pawtucket. Well, you know how close the spread is. So Providence affects the entire state. Even though we say that they have their own police department, their own education department and their own mayor. They're affecting what happens in Providence affects the entire state. Is illegal immigration, the, would you say, the number one issue for your campaign? I mean, it, it's come no, up a lot no, already. I, I wouldn't say it's the number one issue. What no. is the number one issue then? I think the number one issue is let's make this state more attractive to keep people here in retirement. You've got retirees that are moving out of this state every day because we're, they're overtaxed with their property taxes. The income taxes are too high. I would stop taxing pensions, stop taxing Social Security, and do some of these things to help keep these people here. Again, going back to our demographics of our last census, 55,000 people moved out of Rhode Island, 32,000 people are new whether they were births or, or, or illegals coming in or just people moving into the state, we had a net loss of 22,000 people. Joe, we got to go to a break, but uh, quickly before we do, um, do you agree the state is economically in a better place than it was four years ago? Unemployment rate down, job growth, businesses moving in, real estate, something that uh, is near and dear to you, real estate's up? Yeah, I think I think it is a little bit better, but it's got nothing to do with our leadership. It has to do Governor with the Trump Raimondo should take note. She should be. She should oh, go to the church Trump every week. He was sworn into office a year ago. I asked you a question about four years ago. So then, if that's your answer, wouldn't you say, well, the Obama administration has a lot to do with our the economic? Obama. The Obama administration has nothing to do but causing everything to deteriorate. I don't think our state is in great shape. I think it's in better shape today, in the past year, than it's been in a while. But our our unemployment rate is a fictitious rate. It's we're not taking in the underemployment. So many people during our recession went out and just to work just to get jobs, just to put food on the table, took jobs where they might have originally been making $25 an hour. They took jobs at $8, 9 $10 an hour just to get jobs. A lot of those people have not found new jobs. All right, Joe Trillo, independent candidate for governor, is our guest on Newsmakers. When we come back, we have a rapid-fire section for Joe Trillo. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. 
Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. To my left, WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Our guest this week is independent candidate for Governor Joe Trillo. Joe, we're going to do a rapid fire section here. There's just a couple of that topics. That wasn't rapid fire. No, before. believe it or not, it wasn't. <laughs> that was like a trial. That was our warm up. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm looking for one word answers on these. We just want to kind of get through a couple of topics. Um, are you pro choice, pro life? I'm pro life. Uh, do you support legalizing marijuana? I support putting it out to a vote. For a referendum, if okay. If people want it, give it to them. Do you support or oppose a proposal for a gas-fired power plant in Barraville? No. You oppose that. Do you support or oppose giving the governor a line-item veto? Yes. And finally, would you keep Colonel Anna Sumpico as superintendent of the Rhode Island State Police if you became governor? Never. Well, that's a very strong answer. Why, why did you say I that? I just don't think she does a good job. I think you well, need somebody, you and I'm not saying that she doesn't manage behind the scenes well, but you need to be a figurehead to have that. You need to be able to give confidence to the to the electorate, the people out there, when, when disasters happen, when things happen, and I don't think she uh, displays that kind of... Uh, Ability. Okay. I believe uh, in the first segment, if I remember right, you called Governor Raimondo a disaster uh, or something along those lines. Uh, I do remember I was in the House in 2015 when the budget came up. It was the governor's first budget, and you gave an impassioned speech about why uh, everybody should vote for that budget that year. You said, quote, the bottom line is when you look at it as a whole, it's a great budget. It's great for the state of Rhode Island because the state of Rhode Island is headed finally in the right direction under Speaker Mattiello's leadership. Uh, do you regret that now? No. No, because at the time I felt that that was the best budget that we were going to get. But remember, the governor presents the budget. The House then modifies the budget. So it was the modified version that we were voting on. It wasn't necessarily the governor's version of the budget. But it did have, for example, all our uh, commerce RI incentives that that's you and other and the Republicans yeah. are critical yeah. of now. Yeah. And it had some tax breaks. And I think we did the... Um, uh, the uh, estate tax, uh, we raised the estate tax cap, which was important. These are all the things that I want to continue to do as governor. I want to take the estate tax cap and raise it to at least compete with the federal government at $5 million. Right now it's a million and a half dollars. Again, the incentive is to declare your residency out of the state if you have an estate in excess of a million and a half dollars. We don't want to send those people away. We want to keep them here. Those are the people that contribute to our society. Society, and if we just keep importing poverty, we're going to become more of a poverty state. I want to keep uh, on the topic of your old job. In June, Ted and I discovered uh, Frank Montanaro Jr., head of the JCLS, hired by Speaker Mattiello, was able to tap into three years of free college tuition for his family by uh, claiming he was on leave from his old job at Rhode Island College. There have been calls for Montanaro to resign. Again, you worked at the State House for 16 years. What do you think? Well, I think any time something like that comes out at the level that it came out, I think he should have resigned. You think he should have stepped out yes. at the moment? Okay. So first big event of your campaign coming up next week, you've invited uh, Pastor Mark Burns, a fairly prominent Trump's uh, surrogate uh, during the 2016 campaign. He's going to speak on your behalf. Did you, I think, know he's had controversy. Uh, he wants apparently tweeted a photo of a cartoon of Hillary Clinton in blackface and he was a defender of Alabama U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore during that campaign when he faced the accusations about the underage girls. Are you comfortable being associated with all that? I'm comfortable that he's coming in to do an event for me. He's he's one of the most passionate people to talk about President Trump. And uh, President Trump put him on his evangelical council and I think he did a good job. You know, there's always controversy, it seems, about somebody at some level. Um, I think uh, I'm very comfortable having him come in and, and do an event for me. Let me ask you uh, on the president. Um, what's your favorite thing Donald Trump has done as president? Probably the tax bill that he got passed. I think this is going to have a major impact on a lot of Rhode Islanders, in spite of what this governor would have you believe, you know, she doesn't think it's, it's going to do any good. It's going to hurt people. It's not going to hurt the average person making between fifty and and $100,000 a year, the average family. It's going to help them. It's going to hurt other people above the level, maybe a little bit. But the some bottom, of them in your old district, potentially. <laughs> yes, maybe some of the people in my old district. You know, I always find it interesting, though, that when con uh, conservatives for years have been enormously concerned by the uh, the national debt, but seem to be looking the other way 
when uh, you know Trump's tax cuts are going to tack on an estimated 1.5 trillion with a T to the country's credit card. In business, you need to spend money to make money. Here's the difference between Trump doing what he did and Obama doing what he did. Obama just spent money. There was no intent of how you're going to generate more money from the money you spent. Trump is spending money with these tax breaks and everything else he's doing. But they're doing that with a plan that this is going to bring more money into the economy. And if anything, it's going to help reduce the deficit. On the budget, on the governor's budget, uh, you said it shows her idea of new revenue sources is selling more marijuana and enticing more people to gamble. Do you oppose the expansion of sports betting in Rhode Island? It's not so much that I oppose the, the expansion. I expo I, I well, you say, use it as a punching bag yeah, here. But, so. I don't favor expanding gambling as a source of bringing in more revenue. I think it's it's just a false, it's just a false source to go after. It's like reaching for straws. But it might be something you have to sign as governor, and it, uh, although it probably will happen prior to that. But if it does come to your desk, how would you I sign? sign it? Yeah, you would. Okay. Yeah, would. Uh, back to the president. I asked you your favorite thing. What's your least favorite thing? If you had to give him some advice, uh, President Trump, what, what would you change after his first year? We actually just hit his first yeah, year. Yeah, I probably would say run your tweets by three or four people before you send them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the president always defends his tweets. He says that's I how know. he speaks to the people. It, it lets him be for But it's actually, I would say, when I ask Trump supporters what they're what they'd like to change, what they're not comfortable with, it always comes up. It's, it seems like supporters like him in spite of it, which is kind of interesting. Oh, I, I like him in spite of it. And I think it, it's a useful tool for him because he can reach so many people. And I think he needs to continue tweeting. I just think that he needs to run them by more people than probably he runs them by if he runs them by anybody and and just have them okay. I mean, I've been You'd accused have to of staff the, them at 3 a.m. I've been accused <laughs> of the same thing. I mean, people will say to me, please run it by me before you send it out. <laughs> and lots of times, I, if I want to send something out that I know is going to sting, I I don't want you to water it down. I want it out to stink. Yeah, and the president does too, I think. Um, there was an interesting quote, uh, going back to what you were saying about the sort of the two Republican parties in Rhode Island. Blake Phillippe, who's the number two House Republican now in, in Rhode Island. He's got my old job. He told, yeah, yeah he exactly, House Minority uh, Whip, that's right. He made an interesting comment to Rhode Island Public Radio this month. He said the state Republicans' message should be that, quote, we are not the Donald Trump party. We're not Southern Republicans. We're more John Chafee, libertarians. We don't really care about social issues. We care about economics. What do you think of that, a top local Republican saying the GOP or should not be the president's party? That's the reason why I'm running as an independent. That's perfect case in point. And I and I, I like Blake. I think he's a good guy. But I totally disagree with him. That. But that's the kind of mentality that the Republican Party has. I don't want to just pick on the Republican Party because the Democratic Party is split in two, too. You've got the progressives who are leading us down this path of give away, give away more, put people more on welfare. Let's keep them on welfare. They don't do it intentionally, but, but it's part of their scheme. Let's take care of them because the more people that they have, those are those are votes for the people that are progressives. The press progressives have hijacked the Democratic Party. Uh, in a press release, again, blasting the governor's budget, you wrote, the governor promises to expand coverage for other conditions like opioid addiction and mental health. Proposing new programs sounds good, but does our budget understand basic issues like balancing a budget? So insurers, is what you're saying insurers should not be required to cover opioid addiction and mental health? Uh, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be. I don't know to what level they actually cover it right now. I mean, I know they cover mental health. But should issues. they cover it? Broad Here's the problem that we have in this state. The legislature has made more demands on health care providers, insurance providers, to give more and more coverage in a whole bunch of stuff. And when you look at it compared to other states, it's one of the reasons why a health care cost is Okay, two minutes so left, high. but answer the question. Should they be required to cover opioid addiction and mental health? To some extent, yes. Well, I, hold on. What does some extent mean? You'd have to give me all the details of what they're not covering well, and what they will Well, either you cover, cover opioid the, addiction and mental health or you don't. There are forms that, that, that right now they're covering uh, that are covering opioid addiction. Okay, addiction. just over a minute left. Ted, go ahead. One more on the governor's budget because you had a lot to say last week. Uh, you put, on Tuesday, you put out a release uh, criticizing her state of the state address. You, you, you decried our ever-expanding Medicaid rules, the fact that a third of the state's on Medicaid. But two days later, you criticized the governor's budget because you said the only thing she wants to cut is, quote, 
quote, medical help to the most vulnerable who receive Medicaid. If you're upset about Medicaid getting bigger and growing so much around, shouldn't you be happy that the governor's trying to rein it in in her budget with the cuts she proposed? Well, I'm not sure that, that that's going to achieve what she wants to achieve in, in terms of what she's trying to do right now. Again, I'm not privy to all the, the details that are in her cuts. But generally speaking, isn't any time you weave back Medicaid getting toward what you want, a smaller social services? Well, there are services? ways of weaving back. One of the problems we have right now is we have a lot of people who are taking advantage of our health and human services budget, which covers Medicaid and everything else we do, that shouldn't even be on the system. But there's no plan to go in with a scalpel and get rid of them. So all we keep doing is throw money at the problem as opposed to going in and let's chase fraud and waste out and at that point we can do more. Joe Trillo, independent candidate for governor, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you, you forgot to ask, will you debate your opponents this fall? Absolutely, love to. Good. We have the commitment. Not good. surprised on that. <laughs> <laughs> Always like some good debate. Joe Trillo, if you missed any of it, it's online, WPRI.com for Ted Nisi. I'm Tim White, and we will see you next week on Newsmakers. I have an on the record question for you today.